Hello everybody. Happy Wednesday. I am very happy to be able to come and visit you on this Wednesday. And we are right here in the middle of August. I believe this is probably August 16th. And uh, man, oh man, I just can't. I, sometimes I just want to slow things down. I just want to stop. Stop time from moving, but we can't. It just keeps on going. And and you know what? That's a good thing, I think. Uh, we're, we're heading toward fall. We're picking up steam and wrapping up the summertime. And I love... I love that God has given us seasons because we, we get in one season, we love it, we enjoy it, and, and before we know it, it's time for the next one. And summer's been great, and now it's time for us to get ready for the fall. And, uh, of course, a couple things about the fall that we love. We love the weather. Um, North Carolina has amazing springs and falls. They're long, and the summer's short, and the winters aren't bad, so... Uh, our falls here are just beautiful and wonderful, plus it signals football season. So I know this Friday night begins high school football, which is kind of a big deal around here. So uh, Mary and I will be out at some football games and, and uh, out supporting uh, Mount Pleasant. And so I just, I love it. It's a good time. It's a good thing. And and uh, God is, is just really good like that. So I hope you're getting ready for fall. And you know what? We're getting ready for fall here at the church. Uh, there's a lot of, really... A lot of neat things going on this month to kind of get us all together, get us ready to move forward for the fall. A couple of things I'll mention. Uh, this weekend is our teenagers, our students' uh, back-to-school retreat. They're going to be going Thursday, Friday, Saturday up in the mountains, and they have a great time planned, uh, David and, and Matt and the, the girls, and, and just a great time with our teenagers and get them all on the same page spiritually and get them started for the fall. We're excited about that. I want you to be praying for our teenagers as well. And then um, a couple other things coming up. I want to mention this Saturday. Uh, I know that our ladies at FCHM, they'll have a brunch, and they do this regularly at the home of Debbie Thomas. And they're working on dressing a girl around the world. They did this last year, made lots of dresses for little girls that are needy. Anyone interested in helping make dresses should attend the FCHM brunch this Saturday, 10 to noon at the home of Debbie Thomas. That's in our bulletin. So if you have any questions you want to be a part of that, I think it's a great cause. I think it's a great purpose and I uh, love that ministry. Of course, coming up next weekend, there are just a couple things that I'm really excited about. I really need everyone to be here at the farm on Saturday, August 26th. One week from this Saturday, I need everybody to be at the farm because we're going to have, number one, a big country breakfast. We always do our men's breakfast, but this is one of the months we're going to be combined. We're going to invite moms and dads and grandpas and kids and it's a family breakfast. Everybody's invited. Next Saturday, the 26th at 9 o'clock, and we're going to eat from 9 to 10. Now, from 10 to 12, we are going to have some very exciting leadership training, and, and we're going to, uh, to do some very exciting things to give you information about this fall. We're starting some new ministries. We're going to talk about ways to to be better at the different ministries that we have. We can be more organized. And, and, and the main thing is to get more people involved in the ministry of this church. And so everybody, I want you to put it on your calendar. Come eat breakfast with us, breakfast with us the 26th. And then from 10 to 12, we're going to have some leadership time together because I believe that everybody are, is leaders in our church. We'll also have child care, free child care. So if you want to come from 9 to 12, have breakfast with your kids, and then take them to child care right here um, for free. And church is taking care of that because we want you to be here. This is a priority, and I'm excited about that. And then the 27th is one of my favorite times. We're going to have uh, a couple things. We're going to have a baby dedication, which I love. I always love baby dedications. Perhaps you have a new one or a little one, and you'd like to dedicate along with the others that we have. Love for you to invite you to do that, but then Sunday, Sunday night, the 27th, will be our next baptism. And uh, man, we have a great time planned. There, there'll be just lots of fellowship at the home of Cecil and Sonia Jenkins, 6 p.m., and then we will baptize. And, and if you or someone in your family or someone you know has, has accepted Christ and trusted Christ, and, and you've been praying and thinking about making your commitment through baptism, uh, I would encourage you to see me and let me know. We'll get you on the list, get you some details. But the 27th is our next baptism, and that will always be just a sweet, precious time. 
Last Sunday, we talked about sermon number two in our three-part series, Fatal Flaws. The first one, uh, we, we uh, were doing this series, and then this past Sunday, we talked about pride. The first Sunday, we talked about double-mindedness, and Judas kind of showed us that. Uh, Peter, we studied Sunday a little bit, and, and he was a man who was very confident, and he was outspoken, and he, he really, when it came down to it, um, he was not as strong as he thought he was. He, 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 and, and so he fell short because of his pride. And so this week, number three, we're going to talk about uh, compromise. And, and compromise is an interesting subject. It can be a positive thing, but it also can be very detrimental. If we begin to make compromises about the truth. So don't miss this Sunday, sermon number three. And then the 27th, we'll have a special day really dedicated to our children's ministry in our church. And I can't wait. I love that. So I want you to, hopefully you can be here and join us um, the next couple Sundays, and then Saturday for sure on the 26th, okay? All right, I want to look at the book of John, and, and man, some encouraging words today as I look at the book of John, and particularly chapter 15, in, in this Bible that I have here, the, the, the words in chapter 15 are in red. That means they're in red letter edition here, which is the words of Jesus. Jesus is teaching in John 15. And I love it when Jesus teaches us. He's the master teacher. He's the great preacher and orator. And he spoke with, with such power. And people would hear Jesus and say, Man, I've never heard anybody like this. He speaks with such authority and power. And so I want you to join me in John chapter 15. And I want to talk about one verse, but I want to surround it in context with some other verses. Actually, we, want, we really want to look at is, is verse 16, and it really tells us about our purpose. Have you ever wondered or maybe thought to yourself, you know, uh, why am I here? Uh, why am I here? What, what is, what's the point of all this? What is my purpose? Jesus gives us our purpose in John chapter 15, but I want to surround that with some of these other verses. And I want to read... Uh, verse 11 through 17 of John chapter 15, and let's read together. Verse 11, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Did you know that Jesus wants us to be joyful? Jesus wants us to be happy. And, and He doesn't want us to be depressed and sad and struggling. He, his, his joy He makes available to us to put in us so that our joy may be full, we see. So, no, verse 11, we talk about joy. Verses 12 and 13, we talk about love. Listen, this is my commandment. Now, that's pretty important. He said, this is, this is something that, are, this is not just a suggestion. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. So, you know, and, and I know the world we live in. We, we saw events in Charlottesville, and that's certainly not the first time. There has been, there have been from, from the beginning of history, uh, hate and, and resentment. And there, there are these struggles in, in relationships in society, and it's always been that way, and I, I imagine it always will. But Jesus said this, you are to be people of love. In fact, love will distinguish you as my people, as followers. And so, you know, it really is all about love. And, and uh, I heard, I read something recently I thought was pretty good. Somebody said, well, I don't have any black friends. I don't have any white friends. I just have friends. We, we don't distinguish them by the color of their skin. Because Jesus didn't. Jesus loved freely to all. And he says here, This is my commandment that ye love one another. And then we move to verse 14, which, which is an interesting verse. And he talks about obedience. So he said, Joy, love, and obedience. Verse 14, You are my friends if ye do whatever I command you. So Jesus said, You're my friend if you obey me. That's how you really know. And then we move to verse 15, 
which uh, uh, talks about a really neat thing. Verse 15, Henceforth, I call you not servants. Jesus said, I don't call you servants. You're not my servants. You're not lower. You're not my servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. Do you know that Jesus called you his friend? Wow. That, that's pretty cool. I mean, you're a friend of God. If, if you love and have joy and you obey, and, and Jesus said, I call you my friend. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And then verse 16 is kind of the core. This is what I want to talk to you about today. Verse 16, this is our purpose. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So Jesus said, you know what, you, you didn't pick me. I'm, I'm kind of in charge of this, and I chose you. And ordained you, I have anointed you, so that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it you. And so what we see here is our purpose. Do you know why Jesus called you and loved you and saved you? He says in verse 16, so that ye should go and bring forth Fruit. He wants you to be fruitful, to bear fruit, to be productive. That's our purpose in Christ. Not just any kind of fruit, but significant, substantial fruit that remains. And so, as I close today, I would like to ask you and I the same question. Are you being fruitful? Are you bearing fruit through people? Fruit that remains? Are you investing everybody's investing in something. You may be investing in houses or cars or, or fun or many, many things you can invest in. Jesus said, I want you to invest wisely and you bear fruit. And then he wraps it up in verse 17. And I think this is interesting. He goes back and he reiterates love. He said in verse 17, These things I command you that ye love one another. It was so important that he said it twice. So our purpose, based on John chapter 15, is to go and bear fruit that lasts. That is fruit through relationships, through people. Fruit that will last forever. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for letting me come visit you today. I appreciate that. I'm excited about this fall. I'm excited about the rest of this month. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. God bless you. We're praying for you. We love you. And you go have a fruitful day.